Hey up Woodlanders, allow me to introduce you to Victor. Victor is my Alpine tractor. An Alpine tractor is an equal wheel, four wheel drive little tractor, ideal for slopes, hence the name Alpine for in the Alpine mountains and it keeps it super stable going sideways across a big slope. This particular model is a Victor 400, hence the nickname Victor. The 400 is just a model name, you do a Victor 300 and a Victor 400. This one in particular is a front steering model. They also do an articulated steering model that has a central pivot point which means the tractor steers from the center point. There's fours and against with both models but I personally prefer the front steering model even if you sacrifice a little bit of a turning circle for it. Now this one was made in 2006. It is a 35 horsepower model. It runs on a four cylinder Lombardini engine which is a 1400cc four cylinder diesel engine. These tractors have come fully equipped just like a, a bigger spec tractor. This one is made by BCS. They also do them out of the Pasquale and the Ferrari factory. All three models are pretty much the same. Sometimes they change a few tweaks and lights and things like that. But basically the whole tractor unit is the same throughout those three different manufacturers. I'll introduce you first to the rear end. With its three point linkage and PTO output. A PTO is a power takeoff. You'll see that just there somewhere. It's got a cover on at the moment. It's a 540 PTO shaft on this one and it also has a ground speed, which means that if you're operating a machine that, or perhaps a trailer that relies on but the rear wheels being driven at the same speed as the tractor, then you put it in ground speed and your trailer will travel at the same speed as your tractor. In fact, it almost makes it like a six or eight wheel drive. I've never seen an implement that actually runs off ground speed yet. This is the PTO lever. So down on this one is the 540. Center is neutral, no PTO at all. And up is ground speed PTO. And it's a standard spline PTO shaft. The three point linkage on this one, which is one, two, three points you have a top link that comes out here which you attach different machinery to it mowers and chippers log splitters those sort of things i had this one modified to include these quick attach hitches these are category one quick attach balls as a ball goes inside there and it just makes attaching implements that little bit quicker the linkage lift on these is said to be 1000 kgs or 1000 kilograms if you've got a thousand kilogram bearing down from vertical bearing down straight onto the linkage that's what it'll lift however most implements have their weight way beyond that so of course it increases its pivot point and occasionally i can get the front wheels off the ground with a little bit too much weight on the back so i've got some front weights which do just help Keep the front end where it's meant to be, touching the ground. Standard spec on this one has got uh, spool valves, so you've got a double acting spool valve, that's those two things there. It can power like um, something that's got to push both ways, so a backwards and forwards type ram. That could, that's a double acting spool valve. There is actually a tow hitch that goes on here, so there's a, a special metal carriage fits into these pins here and that allows you to put a ball hitch on or a trailer hitch so you can tow a trailer. So I've got an A-frame that connects to the three-point linkage and that's got its own ball hitch on it and I find that slightly better than that arrangement there which gets just a little bit too close to the PTO. Standard road lights and all that kind of jazz, a little bit of a roll bar thing on the back just to stop you from being crushed if you're on the seat and safety wise you'll notice there's a full fold down roll bar comes a standard fitment on these just in case the worst should happen on the steepest of banks. Standard fitting on these is you've got safety seat belt, 
adjustable seat you've got your dashboard with indicators lights uh, the switch gear and you've got your um, hand throttle position just there another part of the safety features you've got both the seat and clutch pedal that are got electronics attached to them so it means that you can only start the tractor when you're sitting on the seat and you've got the foot on the clutch which just means it stops you from lurching down the road or running over yourself if you're trying to be daft starting it without sitting on the seat so this has got power steering ram just there and that makes driving it an absolute breeze it's really easy to maneuver ever so light on the steering i love that part of it my last tractor never had power steering and it was one of the things that convinced me to go for this model in the end standard tire options on these is 16 inch rims you can get some big flotation tires for them and this one from new had some extra wide wheels on normally the 16 inch rims are quite narrow as a standard fitment but this had an upgrade so these run 260 70 16 which is quite a wide pattern tire still an agricultural tread not necessarily a low ground pressure type tread but they are particularly good for me in the woodland as for the lights on this one this particular model hasn't got a steering stalk some of the newer models have got a stalk here with all the light switches on it but this one's got indicators and a switch just there we've got lights and main beam and all that there with a horn just there in the center you've got an hour meter so if you just check that digital dash it comes up first of all with the hour meter so this has done 358 hours and once you start it you get the revs per minute then the rpms come up as for gears and speeds and all that you've got two ranges you've got one range two range and reverse and then four gears within each range so it's, got, it's an eight speed tractor forwards and a four speed tractor reverse just in case the worst should happen and you get stuck you've also got a foot operated rear diff lock and a hand operated front diff lock these both disengage the minute you let them go so they don't stay engaged they're only engaged as long as you're holding the lever or pushing your foot on the pedal that's the handbrake we have the spool valves so this one is the raise and lower of the arms so that's lowering the arms that's raising the arms and this is the double acting spool valve so it pumps that way and also it pumps that way This little control here is for the speed with which the arms raise and lower. So the more you screw it in, the slower it is, the more you spool it out, the faster the arms go up and down. Depends on what implement you've gone. If you're using ground ploughing implements, then you might want it to drop in to the soil at certain speeds. On the right hand side, you've got the foot operated accelerator and then you've got the single brake pedal. So this hasn't got twin brake pedals like a lot of the bigger tractors that allow for quick turning on headlands. This is just a single operated brake which works on the back wheels only. This is the diesel tank where you fill it up with diesel. And this is the little engine, the 1.4 cylinder Lombardini engine, liquid cooled. There's no turbo or anything like that on this really quite a straightforward little diesel engine quite popular they tend to use these engines a lot in uh, mini diggers those sort of things fairly simple to maintain just regular oil changes this tractor now is 17 years old as of today it was imported in 2006 and in all honesty is quite an older model now the new models are a little bit more digital and sophisticated but they do basically the same thing, similar sort of specification. They just look a little bit newer, got better bodywork, better lights, that sort of thing. Do I like this tractor? Yes, I absolutely love this tractor. In fact, ever since I've been in the woodland forestry style business, I've always been seeking a Alpine style tractor because I just think they're really versatile little machines, especially for small scale forestry, which is what I do, and coppice work. 
In the early days I could never afford one and then gradually over the years I kept saving all my little pennies up. I managed to get an Antonio Carraro tractor which was a 60 horsepower turbo diesel Alpine tractor and honestly that was fantastic. I regret selling that every single week. It was a brilliant tractor and thankfully it's still alive somewhere down in uh, Devon Dorset area. There's a guy down there who's still got that tractor and just it's in its semi-retirement stages now. My next tractor I bought was a little Gulliver, which is a little 20 horsepower hydrostatic drive, very micro little tractor. And that was a really nice little tractor. The only downside to that, it didn't have power steering. And I was always worried about the hydrostatic drive packing up. And that's why I went over to something a little bit more straightforward in its designs with simple transmissions, simple clutch, and uh, hopefully it won't cost me a fortune when it goes wrong. I did buy this used about four years ago, so it would have been about 12 years old when I bought it. It only done 200 hours. It worked out about 18 hours a year or something. It was only ever used for topping the field. If you've watched any other videos that I've done on YouTube, you'll notice the tractor makes an occasional appearance. I don't use it an awful lot, but I tend to use it for log splitting, for branch logging, and for timber extraction on my little log trailer. In all honesty, it possibly is a little bit overkill for what I've got. I really do love the tractor. I'd be loath to get rid of it. If I did, it would have to be something similar or slightly better. Is it perfect? No. Um, there's some little niggles on it that I don't like. I don't like where the handbrake is because I guarantee I catch my hand on it. Sometimes I find the ground clearance a little bit on the low side so that if you're going over stumps in a woodland, I've not really ground it out, but if the ground's soft, you can find that you get quite close to some of the stumps. And as I mentioned earlier, sometimes the linkage capacity lets it down. So it'll lift safely about 350 kilo on the back. So quite a heavy duty flail mower or my branch logger, it's really on its limit. And I find that in a woodland with that amount of weight on the back, you've only got to go up a bit of an incline and it starts to pick the front wheels off the ground. So I would say that for me is possibly its biggest limitation is its linkage capacity. While it'll lift it, no problem at all, it's the weight on the front of the tractor can't hold the front of the wheels down. Every now and again, I'll get a little niggle where it won't start. And the reason for that is there's a tiny little switch on the clutch. So when you press the clutch pedal, it tells it that you've got the pedal down. And sometimes the connections on that, because the back of your foot catches it, they flick off. And now I know what that problem is. It's fine, but you come to start it and there's nothing. You think, what, what's wrong with this? And it's just the switch. You have to push the connections back onto that. Another thing that you have to be just a little bit mindful of is these foot plates. They're not that big and although your feet don't tend to slip off them, what you can find is as you're getting on and off the tractor sometimes you can get your foot caught. Now, I've got quite small feet but if you've got big feet just bear that in mind that when you get off as you're stepping through the tractor not to get your ankle caught or twisted on these foot plates. Sometimes when I'm going backwards and I've got to do some maneuvers if I twist my foot like that you can catch the back of your ankle on the tyre. Again, it might be due to the fact that I've got small feet and they tend to go forward and, and do that business. An interesting fact with some of these older models, I found this off the importers from Kilworth Machinery, is that the new machines actually use more diesel than these older machines. So that is one reason why I'm trying to keep this going as long as possible. I think the new models now of these are around about 17 to 18 thousand pounds. I certainly didn't pay that. I think if I was going to be frank and honest with you, I paid 8,200 for this, including the VAT. When it was new, I think they used to be about 12,000 pounds. I did have an early problem with uh, the tractor when I first got it. And because of its lack of use over the years, and there was an implement on the back that just stayed rigid on the back, never got took off or anything. I did have this top ball joint seized which meant that it put a lot of strain on this thread here when I was trying to lift the branch logger and what happened was then is that sheared off and it also had bent this because of the amount of force that had been put on it so talking about to Kilworth, Kilworth straightened up this bottom arm, 
gave me a new one of these to put on and I unseized that ball joint there. It's still a little bit on the tight side. You can just see that. But I do put oil on it now and again. Sorry about waving your pound. And uh, that does seem to, it's, it's not a problem, but it's nowhere near as free and loose as that side. Look. With any machine, a common question is how much fuel does it use? So if I've got attached my little log splitter, I use it on just over tick over. I can use that all day for about eight hours on tick over with a log splitter and it'll use about a gallon of diesel somewhere around there. Sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a bit more, depending on how much work I give it. If I was to use my branch logger, which you'll see in other videos, that has to have an increased amount of revs and takes a little bit more torque to run. That will tend to use just over a gallon of diesel in a day, maybe about one and a half gallons of diesel. But if you were to run something like a flail mower on one of these, which is quite a high power requirement, then you may end up using somewhere around about two to three gallon of diesel in, a, in an eight hour day. Would I buy Victor all over again? Yes, definitely. Can I recommend it to you? Well, to be honest, you've got to really make up your own decision about whether you buy machinery, tractors and that sort of thing. But this for me has been a brilliant little tractor. I've loved it. I love every day I come out on it, even in the rain. I love it then. There's only one day I didn't like it and that's when it got stuck. <laughs> and that was my fault, not the tractor's fault. I really hope that's been of some use to you. If you like machinery and tractors like me, I do love a little tractor. If you're interested in this sort of machine, I recommend to contact Kilworth Machinery. They're the ones that import the BCS machines in blue. They also import now the Pasquale machines, which are in yellow. Similar sort of machine, but if you prefer yellow than blue, then that's that. Kilworth Machinery are located in Smisby, near Ashby de la Zouche in the Midlands of the UK. And they're a great little company to deal with, family run, and they've also got a whole rook of different implements that will fit one of these machines. They range from 26 horsepower, which is the very little baby one, similar size but with a smaller engine, right up to the 100 horsepower Alpine tractors that have got air conditioned cabs and real fancy bits of kit. And you might need about £70,000 for one of those. Now there are bigger tractors that kill with cell that have got a reverse drive option and the whole seat and steering wheel swivel round completely the opposite way so that you face backwards which means that if you've got a rear facing implement like a rear drive flail you drive into the crop as opposed to squashing it first it's a really useful option so all in a cracking little machine so i just want to say thanks ever so much for watching and if you're able to enjoy your tractor days and if you've got a little tractor why not let me know in the comments what sort of tractor you've got how much you enjoy it and what machinery you run on the back thanks for watching I'll see you on the next one. My next tractor was, what was it called? Well, I just want to say, I just want to say thanks. It worked out about 15 hours a week at long angles, not like 10 years old. It, and that was a real treat. And that was, this tractor now is 13 years old. With its three point linkage, with its three point linkage, 